Uh, last time you talked a little bit about politics too, and you were kind of pessimistic. You sounded pessimistic about your country. Is there any changes, any positive changes recently? Mm, actually, this new government brought a lot of positive changes. I think we must have talked two years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, because we had a right-wing government and um, we were just being enslaved by the economic rules. Things were really bad. So this new paradigm, which is not perfect because politicians will always make us pessimistic, um, but after the after the crisis in Portugal, I think a lot of people, including myself, got more political, mm -hmm. and that was good because um, through the vote we could elect elect um, a government that it's more like a coalition coalition of the left wing, and they got rid of all the austerity. Portugal is great, it's thriving. You know our deficit is under control. There's many things to be done. Like last year, we had the most horrible forest fires. And that's something uh, that um, you know we can't explain, and that everybody's pressing very much the government to do something about it, uh, prevention, and not just fighting when everything is burned down. And also, in education is always um, a big fight. And I don't know why governments mess so so much with the things because they are like frustrated teachers or something, and they always want to leave their mark on education. That's why it's so chaotic in Portugal because mm -hmm. we always change governments; they always change policies. But um, yeah, but uh, <clears throat> I'm still pessimistic uh, in a world that uh, economy and politics uh, resolve everything, you know, and I think that we should find a different way of not um, ourselves thinking just in an economical or political form. That's why I think doing th stuff with books, doing stuff with art, doing stuff, you know, that is real and not only social or viral or whatever, it's um, every time more um, more important because I think what will happen is that um, a lot of people on this crazy run will you know disappear from the earth and I think that the people who are preparing themselves right now and um, establishing themselves um, will have a better chance when a big crisis is coming because they are always around the corner and we have Trump in the US so we can go to war at any time I believe. Yeah. And do you think people are more cautious in Portugal nowadays about politics? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the newer generations, um, they want gaming, you know. They, don't, they, they are not caring, but we were the same. Um, we wanted to smoke joints and drink beer. <laughs> and we didn't think about politics when we were the same age, so we are no one to criticize. But my generation, it's um, very um, political. And because we were born in 74, most of us, um, right when we had uh, the fascist dictatorship uh, ended by the army and by the socialist and communist party over there, which was not um, like in the east, it was something way more moder moderate. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and um, so we got um, politically, and we, we need to be at least informed, you know, there's people that complain just for the sake of it, and they have no idea if they're the compliance are rightful uh, or not. So I think it's a question on um, politics, it's a little about rights and duties. So I think we should be informed about um, that as much as we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If a party of your choice uh, offered you a seat in the parliament, would you be a part of, of any movements or parties? Um, I wouldn't like to be a deputy mm -hmm. uh, in the parliament. I would like to be a, a professional uh, politician because um, I have a good friend uh, who is one and he tries really to make the difference, but it's such an um, inglorious fight that I would rather change things through other means. You know, I think, for instance, philosophy is something that's com almost forgotten. Um, and no world leader nowadays debates with someone that uh, spent his life studying ideas and history and words. So I think I'll um, rather be a consultant. You know, because for instance, our president has um, like a council of state, and many people from different religions, different um, creeds, different society levels go there and advise him on the great major problems um, of the country. Because in the parliament, it's like you know, it's like um, you have to be, you have to vote with your country. Anything I will do politically will have to be independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Yeah. Right. And if you were in charge, what would you change in your country? Well, I'll start off by controlling the tourism in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. 
we don't have um, a city, our city is um, getting a lot of awards, but I'm very afraid it happens to Lisbon what happened to Barcelona or Venice, you know, because um, when you receive tourists, you cannot just make the city for the tourists, you know, because they go there and they, you know, go and fuck off and go to other place, you know, and when Lisbon is not trendy, we'll pay the price. And I live, I don't live in Lisbon downtown anymore, but I live for five years, and now when I go there, um, I feel the, the city is exploding, you know, and it's not a nice feeling, especially not for a, a city that was already devastated, <laughs> you know, 263 years ago. So um, I will definitely change that. I will definitely make a policy of um, forest fires much more based on the scientists than on the politics and then on, on the arguments of uh, people that um, chop down trees to make paper. So yeah, there will be lots, some um, lots to do. Vote for me, Portugal. <laughs> Uh, if you could eliminate anything from mankind, what would you wipe out? Right now, Donald Trump, I have to say, is a cancer of mankind. And um, I don't care if people um, call me a snowflake, and I've been unfortunately fighting with a lot of the US fans that, um, you know, that support right, racist and um, reactionary things. And I think, um, of course, music can connect us uh, and should connect us. But, um, I mean, you just have to look around. We are not making uh, anything up. It's the worst thing that happened um, to the world. And um, I think it became, it's not like a Cold War again, uh, because other countries are minding their own business, of course. They always be evil characters. But I'll eradicate him, definitely. And all these shit ideas and all these comments and all his personality from Earth, because um, people um, don't know, or probably it's stranger than fiction, but um, you know, he's poking the belly of the world to see if something falls. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's making America great again. And I hope I, when I cross, you know, into going to into the US, U.S. in September, that we're going to tour there, and then I go to the airport, and there's this picture there. I hope I don't laugh at it and get arrested, yeah. I think nowadays it will be the country I'll be uh, uh, feeling most um, unsafe because I think it's crazy and this thing that happened with the decapitated the Polish man, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't happen in Europe, fortunately, and we can brag yes. about it, yeah. But many people say that Hillary Clinton wasn't a real good candidate either, so do you think that she would have made some differences instead of Trump? Well, she wouldn't have um, gone out of the Paris treaties, she wouldn't um, go out and poke North Korea. Of course, politicians in, um, in, in the States, and if you read about their, their, polit their politics, sometimes they are puppets. I think Hillary will be more of a puppet, puppet <coughs> definitely. But um, it was the last of two evils, you know? Exactly. So, um, if I was a voter in the States, uh, because Unfortunately, I mean, to be honest, we could all not even talk about it because I've been in the States, we have many fans there, there's great stuff in the States, there's great culture, great great literature, great food, it's perfect. There's also a lot of other stuff, <clears throat> misery, poverty, unemployment, you know, guns, people getting wild. Okay, it's a big country, like many big countries uh, I have been. But I think what really fails, it's the everything they do externally. Their foreign policy is horrible. It always has been with almost every president. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, I think it, re it reached the peak of, um, of being negative mm -hmm. towards uh, other countries. And I don't understand that. I don't understand um, the need. I think um, they should mind more their own business because there's a lot of problems to solve there. Healthcare to start. People die when they have no money, you know. It doesn't happen here in Hungary or in Portugal, no. I mean, there's a lot of problems, but at least we are based in human values. It's not, we don't see a person that doesn't have money, we see a person who is dying. And I think they should definitely learn that from us. Yeah, but even Europe is, seems kind of divided nowadays, especially the Western and Eastern European countries. You know, some people say <coughs> Poland and Hungary is really like a huge opposition for Germany and France nowadays. How do you see that? Well, 
um, I see that as a natural result of a Europe nobody wanted. What do um, Hungary, Poland, Portugal, Spain wanted from Europe? Money. We got our money, we built our roads, we paid our corrupted uh, polit politicians, but um, the personalities of our countries do not allow us, you know, to be that kind of Europeans that Germany wants, that Germany wants. And uh, of course that the um, European community was uh, something of a federal project to, um, to um, bring peace into Europe that was devastated by wars. But then again economy struck struck cards and uh, then we start, they started dividing between people who worked in the north, people who, who didn't work, people that were more, let's say, or less Catholic and people that are more extreme into Catholicism like Poland is now. So yeah, I think that is um, Europe, what we have now. I think this um, is uh, completely natural and I think that, um, you know, very few things connect us as an European. I don't feel like an European, I feel like a Portuguese. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the continent of Europe, great, I love Europe, I love European culture, it's my favorite, my favorite cities to visit. But um, I never believed in a federal Europe. Uh, the philosophers spoke about it, you know. But um, it wasn't made by philosophers. It was made by politicians, and then um, were um, that were controlled by uh, money lenders, you know. So I think um, when you are in a country, for instance, and they say some guy in Brussels on a suite says a Portuguese fisherman, well, you cannot fish sardines because. Not that there is not enough for you to fish, but you have to buy them from Spain. Of course, people will rebel, and if Portugal rebels um, uh, for some reason, it will be it will it will definitely be um, for the fish. <laughs> yeah. I also brought up this Western and Eastern thing because some people uh, visualize Vladimir Putin like you know, another huge danger for Europe. What do you think about that? I think people are paranoid uh, against Russia. I like Russia. I've never been mistreated in Russia. There's many problems in Russia, like um, we all uh, we all know. But I visit Russia quite uh, often, and what people, um, what Russians tell me about uh, Putin, and you know, Russians are hardened people that have fought, that have lived under the strict rule of communism, that have seen their country falling apart um, as well. All these after a thousand years, <laughs> you know, of monarchy. So, even though the revolution is now a hundred years, we still need time to... Um, but I'm not the guy that is going to demonize uh, mm -hmm. Putin, definitely. There's not much that he has done that has affected my personal uh, life or the life of the Portuguese or the life of Europe. Of course, he has a beef with everyone around, um, but um, that's being neighbors to Russia, you know. You cannot do nothing. I mean, the Finnish did. <laughs> they did it. But um, I don't see him uh, like as an, an evil power in the world. I think that that um, Russian um, electing Trump is a totally uh, lame excuse for um, you know for um, Democrats that um, thought they would have win the election because it was impossible for for Trump to win. But but um, he did. Um, he did win. So, I mean, as a Portuguese citizen and as a visitor of Russia, I never had any problems. I know problems exist. I'm not, um, I'm not um, dumb, but um, you know, also it's probably not that easy to uh, govern such a huge, <laughs> vast land. I mean, Portuguese governments governments have difficulties, and with just 10 million people, so imagine when you have 10 million just living in a city. <laughs> Yeah, because many people finger point at Putin nowadays, even in France or Eastern Europe, because he is involving in, involved, uh, he is involved in the uh, elections and stuff like that, which is not proven. Yeah, France sold <coughs> guns; they just discovered it. Um, I think it was to Africa. So all countries have their um, black spots. They should not point fingers. I think that uh, one of the things that actually hurt Europe was a kind of um, France just disappeared. You know. French culture was so important um, in Hungary, in Portugal. French values from um, you know the, um, the constitution of France, the laws of France, the um, French Revolution. Uh, all of our Europe was changed after after that. 
I mean, it didn't work, there was still wars, etc. But um, the concept of Europe was born, in my opinion, much more in France than in, than in Germany. So um, I think if France, that's why I want to relearn French again, France should have a step up. But they have a big problem inside with, the, with immigration and they have this almost weird sexual thing with um, people from North Africa and it's quite you know, hateful over there in some, in some, some regions and it's quite uh, hardcore. Uh, I'll say, but um, I think France will be a country with its culture and its history definitely appropriate. Why not to um, not to rule Europe, but to point the right direction? Mm -hmm. Well, unless the same happens in Germany. I mean, last time in the New Year's Eve, there was a separate part for women and for men to celebrate because of the rape. That's a very, very a big issue because um, Europe is supposed to get. Um, you know, the refugees, but a uh, big problem in Germany, they got so much and I think they didn't find employment for all. So it's, and I know that um, more to the East people are, I don't know, are hungry at a lot of um, problems as well. I mean, Portugal, we said, well, we can get refugees, but they didn't want to go to Portugal, I don't know why. And um, they prefer to go to Spain, Italy, and um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big issue. I think the the first thing definitely is take take care of the people if they are at risk of life. No, that's being human. But uh, then to find a political solution um, uh, for them, yeah. But um, I mean, why why do these people f uh, come to Europe? Uh, I mean, we we cannot forget forget that the European countries, the U.S., Russia, the old interests in this world, they are fighting in the, uh, war theaters, they have always been like this. We had a, um, a, c a civil war when we had Angola in Africa and then in 74 it got independent because empires are made to uh, you know, be destroyed. No country can have an empire. You know, Portugal is not an imperial country, it had an empire. So, and then they had a civil war in Angola and one of the parties was was communist, was supported by Russia, at the time Soviet Union, and the other part was liberal, supported, because US and, um, and uh, Russia, they had always been fighting in a lot of places, and they were fighting against each other through the bodies of someone else. You know, and I think that's um, something that we need to know, because those wars, those fights, those exploitations have completely ravaged African countries, or even beautiful countries like Syria and people have to go anywhere. So I think that um, nowadays we have to deal with the consequences but we cannot forget that we are also a part of the cause because what happened on those countries has our finger there. We have blood in our hands as well, yeah. Uh, if you had no financial or logistic limits, what would you like to accomplish with Moonspell? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that will, um, in a way, um, the game will, will be fixed, you know, it's because um, a lot of what Moonspell is, is um, was made fighting against the budget, against the timing, against the struggle. What I would love to do, more realistic, and that, for that I would need money, not endless money, but I would like to do a show with 1755 in Terreiro um, do Pass in Lisbon, which was the impact zone of the big wave. And I would like to do it with the band, of course, with a full choir, with a full orchestra, and um, also with probably actors, like from the you know trying to reenact the, the that that season, and also video mapping of the earthquake. I would like love to do this big show and record it on DVD. So I kind of know how how much does it cost. It's not it's not endless, but it's a push. Let's see if we can do it. That will be the perfect. Uh, and to, for the for the seventy five tour, yeah. By the way, you have experimented a lot with Muspa during your whole career. Uh, is there any reason why you don't really play any songs from Simpacado and Butterfly Effect recently? Time. <laughs> that's time. that's the reason. But um, honestly, I mean, we love this tour. I, uh, we are a special guests and friends of Cradle. Uh, people love both bands. It's 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 quite a tour. It's um you know sometimes you get these shitty tours and. The audience goes there and then they 
get out and then the audience of the other band gets in and it's sad for everyone but not this tour. I think it's uh, really a match made in hell and we've been doing this successfully uh, touring since probably almost 15 years that we toured together touring because you already know them since um, since 94 so here we try to present our new album which is more important for us and uh, also some um, classics it's called this way but the the, the lion's share it's the it's 1755 and then when we headline so that people will come to our shows um, as well we will um, definitely we've been practicing mute from um, sin which is a really cool song it is totally probably wouldn't fit here but probably you would you never know sometimes you are in an extreme show and you play something emotional and that's you know the, the highlight of the concert and um, for butterfly effect I think soul sick and uh, awesome. probably the butterfly effect track will be coming in into, into our sets but sin yeah sin we're gonna practice at least two or three songs because the album is um, coming out um, uh, well it's 20 years since the uh, scene was uh, released 98 and um, yeah there's some 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 songs that will definitely work live we still just we have just agreed in mute because um, Pedro wants to play decadence Ricardo wants to play let the children come to me we know very well we haven't forgot about any of our other any of our albums but I think <clears throat> next week we have line we'll definitely do some scene cuts and Butterfly and also The Antidote because a lot of people ask for that song's live as well. My other favorite? Yeah. <laughs> uh, any last words to your fans? Well, um, thank you and thank you for the interview. It will be a great time here at A38, the most famous boat in Budapest, I think. I don't know if there's anything more famous. So um, thanks for supporting 1755 and see you back on the road. Thank you for the interview. No problem. Man. Obrigado. My pleasure. Nada.